Hi and welcome back to the breadboard and the third part of how to make a 3D mask of your own skull. In the first part we looked at how to uh, extract uh, two 3D models from a CAT scan image that you can obtain from a uh, hospital or a, a other x-ray department uh, depending on how you uh, obtain this of course it may cost you money it may not in my case my daughter had an accident and it is her model that we are using to build this mask. Yes, that is a nice, horrible, painful dent in the forehead. Um, in the second video, we showed you how to clean up the two models, one of the face with all the flesh and one of the skull, so that they can be used with Blender to create the mask. This will involve uh, cleaning out the inside of the skull effectively with a profile of the face so that when you actually manufacture it either by 3D printing or other means it will fit neatly onto the face of the wearer especially of course if that face was the one that the mask is modeled from. So in my case um, my daughter Jessica and I are using her own um, CAT scan to create this skull mask for her to use. So we left the video off on part two with having two models, one of the face that had been cleaned up and one of the skull. Now we're going to use the face now to impress on the inside of the skull to delete a lot of the internal structuring and to provide a relatively smooth, pro smooth profile um, that will need a little more cleaning up afterwards because we haven't touched the inside of the skull yet but will give us a good starting point for the final mask. So let's get to Blender which is the tool of choice here. Um, I'm not going to tell you how to don download or install it. It is a standard Windows application and I have provided the links at the end of this presentation or in the post so that you can go and get it yourself. So let's fire up Blender and I'll show you what we do. Now a point to note here again is we will be doing some steps to load in both models at the same time into Blender. Do not move either of the models when you're loading these because otherwise you will have some difficulty trying to get them aligned again. Right now because we haven't moved them at all in any of the processes uh, they will actually overlap each other perfectly. Uh, we may need to do some minor adjustment because we have scaled up the skull by about 132 percent so we may want to push the face slightly further forward in the skull to provide a neater fit and not have um, skull areas that are too thick when you want to print and making it top heavy or something like that but nevertheless um, the process we're going to do is the same uh, no matter how you do this and it's just a case of minor positioning of the face that we will cover when we uh, get to that part. So let's fire up Blender and get to it. So this is how Blender 2.78, which is the version I currently have loaded, loads up. We just click away that. You normally get a little default cube that shows up, so just select it, press delete, and accept that to get rid of it. Now first thing we need to do is load both of our models in. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a file import and then pick STL and we're going to go to the folder where we saved the skulls to which in my case is on the desktop under Jessica's brain. Alright so the two files we need are mask face solid video and mask skull solid video. So we'll load the skull first and you just say import. Let's take a moment now you cannot see it, it's somewhere off to the left hand side here, it's quite big relative to the scale of the screen, but we want to import the other model first before we do anything. So we're going to go to another import, uh, still file, and this time we'll pick the face, so mask face solid, and we will import that. Now they're both imported. Now you need to basically scroll outward, zoom out. I find that because of where these get loaded, if I hold the mouse over to the upper right of the origin, which is basically where these blue, green, and red arrows uh, intersect, so just a little bit up to the right of it, and then scroll out, as you can see here, 
you will, there we go, the model should just start to appear. And what we'll find now is that, and I shouldn't have done that. Control Z is your friend. I just put it back to where it came from. Different tools, different buttons for making the model turnable. So I'm just going to turn this around. You can see here now that the face is fitting right inside the skull, which is great. Now what we want to do is bring it forward a little bit because we've zoomed up the skull. It's moved it out in all directions and we've only moved this face out by about 2% in scale. The skull came out by 132%. But you can see here that we have a huge amount of space around here. We can actually move the face forward. So what you want to do is select the face by clicking it with the um, mouse so that only the face is highlighted and then using these axis pointers, I think the red one, don't go off the middle, uh, you can move it very carefully in only one axis and that's the wrong one. You can see that's actually moving it sideways. So let go, hit control Z to put it right back where it was and I think the right Control Z is your friend. Middle mouse just to change the axis. So the green one is the one we want here. That looks like the one that is front to back of the skull. So we'll bring it down. You can see the ears protruding out here. Just position it a bit better. So we need to use the green button and we can move the face forward. See now we're just coming right out of it. So we're going to come back in till it's just fitting nicely. Let's just turn around. Remember it's the green one we want. And if we use the green we can just get to it here. That's going up and down on the wrong one. So let's just position the eyes nicely. And let's see if we can get a hold of the green arrow. Let's move it up like that a little bit. And we'll move it forward. We just see there it's poking through the bone of the dent. So we want to make sure it's just a bit back from that. So about there. And you can see that the ears are just poking through the edge of the skull there, which is great. All right, a lot of bits of the skull through the bottom. So now what we want to do, I think that's fairly good positioning, is we want to use the face to remove the insides of the skull. So the way that you do this is you come over to the right here and on this little menu bar you'll see a wrench. You click the wrench to bring up a toolbar and we want to add a modifier and the modifier we want is boolean. Now we're going to apply this to the skull. So see right here right now the selected object is actually the mask face solid. We need to select the skull. So just right click on the skull and now you basically want this to say mask skull solid video which is the one that we loaded in. Now the modifier disappeared so let's go back and recycle boolean and we want to not have intersect but difference and the object we want to use is going to be hey man. mask face solid video is what we're going to apply to the skull and nothing should happen yet it might take depending on the speed of your computer that might that operation may take a little while but nothing has been done yet this face is still there the mask skull is still there nothing has been removed now when we do apply so just double check we want difference the main top one here wants to say the object we're going to apply to which is the skull the one down here next to different says we're going to use the face to basically take away from the skull and all we now have to do is click apply so I've just done that it'll take just a moment now it's done now you can see the face is still here so now if you reselect the face and we just press the delete key you can always do control Z if you get this wrong remember that we'll hit delete now if you look here now we should see that as you can see now the skull is fairly well empty I mean there's are there are artifacts left lying around some of them are floating 
and we'll deal with those in Mesh Mixer. My daughter has put together the video to show how she cleaned up all of this model in Mesh Mixer so that we can um, get the skull to fit nicely, just to get rid of all any of uh, the jaggies and things like that, all right? Clean up around the ears, thicken up a few places. If you look at the front of this, you can see that there are some areas where it's a little bit um, eaten away. This is where thinner, thinner bone is and things where uh, maybe nerves and other things go through. So we need to clean those out. But we have a fairly good um, fit there now. You can see uh, in certain areas where, um, like here, where the nose has touched and carved a little bit of it out. So my daughter has got her part of the video done showing you how to fill this up so that we can actually um, come back into here and reapply the face inside and get it a little bit smoother on the out, on the inside for, for wearing and also to clean up some of the back here because if you even clean the bottom up you can see because of the curvature this won't be very easy to wear it. Um, if you carved it out of say a silicon mold of course that would fit but if you try and 3D print this to, fit, uh, to wear then it's not going to fit as well at all. All right, but anyway, now that we've got this, we want to export it so that we can go back into Mesh Mixer because I find that tool a little bit easier than Blender. I don't know Blender well enough, um, but Blender is the only tool that I have found that will hollow out the inside of the skull easily. I know that Autodesk 123D and Fusion 360 and a few other ones are supposed to be able to do it, but I think because of the complexity of these models and other factors, I just found it almost impossible to get it to work reliably. With Blender, it worked first time every time that I've tried this. And as you can see here, uh, I didn't have to go back and redo anything. So let's just save this now, and we will go back to Blender. So we need to export this as an STL. All right. And we'll just keep with the naming convention that we have. So we'll go back to the desktop, go back to Jessica Brain. And we'll call this, um, this was Mask Face Solid. So now we're going to just call it Mask Solid Video, I think. Mask Solid Video Blender. Just so we know where we did it. Um, .stl. And we'll save that. Now that's done, we can exit Blender. We really want to quit. Um, so what we've just done here is we've gone in, we've loaded both models, we have added a modifier to the skull using the face by selecting the operation difference. Um, the modifier is a Boolean one. We've made sure we've selected the face as the object we're going to use to apply the Boolean difference. And we've then finally now exported as a still file so that we can open it back up in Mesh Mixer. So I'm going to show you just a little bit of um, the cleanup in Mesh Mixer, but then I'm going to finish this part of the video with that. And the next video will be my daughter taking you through how she cleaned up the inside of the model um, and took away some of the back of the skull and things like that and filled out uh, a lot of the areas of the skull so that when you do 3D print it or whatever manufacturing process you're going to do, it will have a little more strength. So she's thickened up a few areas, uh, filled in some of the cavities that we don't want to be there. Um, I'm just gonna show you how to clean up some of these little pieces that in this particular slide show up as orange. So let's bring up Mesh Mixer and um, I'll show you that. Okay, so I've just loaded up the model back in Mesh Mixer. And as you can see, it's nice and clean on the inside here. But there are a lot of loose artifacts. And if you remember from our discussion before, um, all you need to do to clear up those, the loose ones especially, is just go select, double click on the skull. It should highlight everything on the skull. Press I to invert. And if I just move this, you'll see all the loose objects have been selected. Now we can just press delete and it's removed those. Now, obviously you can still see here that there are parts of the model around here that need to be removed. So I'm just going to remove these couple of pieces here to show you, but then we're going to finish the video there because really this is about using Blender to punch a hole in the face uh, for wearing. And then I'm going to finish the video, go back to 
the mesh mixer clean up that my daughter will take you through how to fill out and trim the model to make it more ready for 3D printing. Now I will then take that model one more time through mesh mixer, sorry, through blender, just to reapply the face on the inside of it. Um, but then we'll be done. Okay, so let's just do a quick little bit of a cleanup in here. And if you remember, the easy way to do this is to get a view to this, chop away at some of the lines like here and here, here and here, just to isolate these, and then just do a delete um, by doing select all and then just removing these uh, areas. So let's just clear that selection. Let's go select, shrink down the size of the selection tool so that we're not picking too much at a time. And we don't want to obviously delete from the nose, but we do want to basically cut away here. Now it won't cut on the inside of the um, skull. If I try and select over here, it won't do that. So we're fairly safe from that perspective. We do want to cut down here. If we can, that'll isolate this. Um, we want to come down here. Okay, so you can just isolate that part. And you need to go both sides of it, of course, so that it goes right through. Um, come up here just to cut that down. And up here so that we can get this away. And probably, yeah, we need to get this here. So if we can just flip around and get that there cleaned out. Now if we press delete, I think that hopefully will have isolated those areas, which looks like it has. Let's see if we can just double click that and then just press delete. Now we have basically the hollowed out skull. Yes, there are a few sharp areas, but you can see where the um, face now has nicely um, made impressions. You can see with the smooth spot. So just here. Uh, now there's a ridges, some some ridges here, and I'll explain what those are. So right here and here, there's some where it stops, and that's because the face, being smaller than the skull now, actually doesn't go down as far in the skull. But my daughter will show you in her cleanup video how to remove these and trim it anyway. We probably don't want these things ultimately in the mask. Because if you think about this, with the head like this, all right, um, you want this front piece, you want maybe the, a lot of the skull, but this is where the ears are, and that's obviously where they're gonna stick through. So you don't want that. You probably want to bring this up, curve it around in front of the ears, and maybe bring it up high here. So you have a good part of the skull, um, but you're able to plop it onto your head easily. So this back piece here, where it curves deeply underneath, you probably want to remove it. Or perhaps if you cut it off, you could uh, maybe have some kind of mechanism, magnet, something that will let you put it back on easily. But in our case, we're just going to trim this right back so it makes it easy to wear. So that's all I'm going to show you for this video. So what we've done is gone through um, Blender. I've shown you how to uh, bring the two models in and then how to merge them together and then come back into save it as an STL file um, then clean up the additional artifacts and just trim away a few of the bits and pieces so the next thing we're going to do in the next video part four is a tutorial on cleaning up the complete insides of the model and thickening out some areas with blender and then we will have one final dive in sorry not with blender with mesh mixer and then we'll have one final dive into blender just to re-impression the face on the inside of the mask to make a nice smooth fit and the reason why you fill out some of the inside pieces as you saw was because not everything has been touched by the face on the inside of the skull because remember it was your brain that was in there before and your nasal cavities and all sorts of other niceties so we're just going to try and fill it out so that it fits a little cleaner on your face.